Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this, this, this section of the segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. We're kind of like continuing on. Uh, right now, we're right into politics, folks. We're right in the middle of it right now. We're going to be spending all of our time basically educating you about what is going on here in the living room of Oregon, in Portland, Oregon. Okay, of that. And we're going to be discussing the candidates who's, who's running for office. Uh, as one would say, are they conservative or liberal? But the bottom line, you... You, you, the bottom line to what is a conservative liberal is your resume. <laughs> I want to know what you bring to the table to solve the major problems that we're dealing with. And you're hearing all this stuff about homelessness. We're talking about mental illness. We're talking about drugs. We're talking about fentanyl. Uh, you know, I mean, what does that mean? And it's a lot of us not as sophisticated, if you will, to be able to get the get the information from a lay standpoint. And in most cases, it's so sophisticated you you're afraid to even open your mouth about it because people get nervous so anyway i just wanted to let you know that kind of like that you get you into the the show that we're going to be talking to you about for the next hour or so i got my my dear friend here with us again john Turan. i mean boy i tell you what what this guy's got all kinds of information and i'm so glad that, that he's here and he's going to be with me on on this for quite some time if in fact he doesn't all of a sudden jump out and start running again so he might still sin regardless if he, he might he might want to run for office because i may push him in that arena because he's giving us all the information he, he's sitting at all the tables across the board so he's a really a non-partisan kind of a guy <laughs> and i like that welcome john again well thank you for having me on the show happy holidays <laughs> oh, to you and your family thank first. you very much and happy holidays to the, to the viewing audience yes, too definitely hate to put it that way but this is your this is under the tree you can open it up yes right here on the Oregon voters digest <laughs> <laughs> we're giving you something you know during these holidays okay so enjoy yourself but what during that particular time let's go on we're going to get right into the, the where we where we left off in the last show and you can go back by the way go on youtube and you can pick this up yeah on that piece and get that long term if not that there, there's some reruns if you will uh over the the next uh, during the week tuesdays and fridays and so uh yeah we, we were we, we kind of finished uh talking about uh district two yeah okay but um, I, did, I did want to point out to our Here's district, district right district, now. Yeah. District map right okay. here. Uh, district 2 is the northern, obviously the northern. G portion give them the color brand there. District 3, uh, yeah, District yellow. 1 is what? District 1 is blue. Blue, uh, okay. District 2 is uh, the yellow. District 3 is green. And District 4, it, or 3 is turquoise. And four is green. Okay, good. They can good. Use some different colors. And, 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 some, and something within those various areas. Now, in District 1, that that uh, let's see what's 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 so significant in district number one so i would is say the airport you said the airport the airport part? is 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 the big one you know so it's got the biggest business in, okay, in, okay. in the city okay um district and, number one yeah district number two district number two is uh north portland the northeast portland no, I, north the, northeast the so yeah, i would say that. it's like the probably the geographically the biggest district um, so it's going all the way, you know, from Kelly, you know, all the way up there, North Portland. In the uh, island, in the island. Uh, 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 Sobeys, actually, Sobeys is not in the city of Portland. Is that right? Is that right? It is, um, it is uh, unincorporated Multnomah County. Oh, okay. And so, uh, you know, practically what that means is the Portland I'm talking Fleet. about Jansen Beach up in there. Oh, area. okay. You're talking Hayden Island. Yeah, Hayden Island. Oh, you're talking Sobeys Island. Island. See, I mean, I'm... I'm just, you know, yeah, okay. Hey, no. Yeah, hey, Nyland, Delta Park. Yeah, Delta Park. Um, you know, they've been dealing with some really hard homeless issues out yes, there. Yes, very much so. Very much so. Yes, yes. And, you know, another contentious issue is I, you know, I am conducting a survey, and one of the questions that people are always like, they're, it, it's, are kind of shocked, but, and you can go to the survey here uh, on this QR code. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, is one of the questions that kind of seems like out of left field is like, do you support the bottle bill? Okay, okay, okay. And Tom McCall. A lot of people don't. Yes, and a lot of people, um, a lot of people that don't deal with it have no idea what type of problem that it is presenting okay. for um, people, and it's usually the people that are like close in Central City, but. Um, there, there's a you know when the bottle bill was introduced by Tom McCall, McCall the purpose was to 
get the bottles off the streets right. and get them right. into recycling right. containers, right? right. 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 Um, but a lot's changed since then. Um, you know, the big thing is we have curbside recycling. Right, 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 right. Everything, you know, practically everything. Well, pe people are picking them up now. Well, 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 but more importantly is that people recycle without a financial incentive. You know, you see people recycle their newspaper in that little bin. You see them recycle plastic. That's like non-deposit. You see them um, uh, recycle cardboard. You know, that like... Okay. So it's it, it's it's become a part of our ecosystem by having those uh, yellow bins as part of our trash pickup. Okay. Now that's the garbage pickup. Well, the the yellow, the, bins. The yellow bins are for recycling. For so recycling. you have your, you yeah, have your garbage can, and then you have the yellow okay, bin. You got the yellow bin. Okay. As right. Far as the okay. Okay. And then so the, the the little yellow bin is where you you put all of your recycling mm -hmm, material. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and so we we have curb curbside recycling now, mm -hmm. and so. Some of the negatives about the bottle bill that, you know, I've heard just talking to people is that, like, people go through your garbage looking for, uh, oh, yeah. you know, looking oh, yeah. for bottles. Yeah, they're looking for that income. And so that can create some uncomfortable encounters yeah, yeah, yeah. for people. Um, another thing that is happening is um, every store is required to redeem bottles. Right. Unless... If they're within a certain area for one of those big bottle drops, right, 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 you've right, seen like right, the bottle drop out oh, yeah, of Delta Park. Right, right, yeah, right. So if it, and I, the numbers might be wrong, but if there's a bottle drop, basically all the stores within a half a mile of that bottle drop no longer have to take um, take you know redeem the bottles for money. Why is that? Uh, because the the bottle drop does it. The red the bottle drop. Yeah. Okay. Right. But, but still, they go through that process. So. Um, so a lot of the, you know, so what that does is it, it creates these islands around the city where, um, you know, there's area service there it is right there. by bottle drop, right? <laughs> service by there bottle drop. There it is right drop. there. Oops, I've got mine. Yeah, <laughs> but then you have like these little areas that are that are outside of the bottle drop area, but you'll you'll still have stores there. So those stores get overwhelmed by people bringing bottles into them because like because like with bottle drop, I believe you have to have a bank account. No, 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 no. You, you just register. You just register, and they and they give you a slip. You can either use it, use the monies and shop there, or you can keep it and you know you can just let it stay and then do it that way. You can how just, how do you get cash the, it out? How do you get the cash off of it? Very very simple. You go up to cashier. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So 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 it's, so it's it, it, it did works. You, did you you didn't need a bank account for that or anything? No, no. Okay. It, it, it's it's there for you. They they, they retain it. They retain it once you drop the you, you you know you drop it in the deal and then it, it basically goes to your number. You, okay, yes, you have an account. So my mm -hmm. understanding is that you can't. It, it's it's a lot harder to get direct cash from that. Oh no no, you can get cash. Yeah, you can get cash. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and in all due respect, uh, it really helps the homeless problems to a certain degree. Because they, they don't they don't just throw away the bottles and the cans. Right, right. and and then this has also led to like. A problem that's getting international news okay. is that um, so people are using their food stamps to go buy water, pouring out all the water, and then just returning it into. I know nothing about that. Now. Yeah, I know, I know one thing. So, at, at Delta Park, let me trust me. There's a line. Yeah, and those people bring those bottles up there. Yeah, you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and so, so 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 the areas at least they, you don't see any bottles on the streets. Right. So. For 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 a lot of people that live in the central city, right. um, it's it's creating like a lot of problems, and it's not serving the problem that it was originally to do, which was like, you know, get bottles off the street. Right, we've right, got right. we've got curbside recycling. People use curbside recycling right, right, for right. everything. Right, right, right. Um, so there is a lot of discuss. Like I know the people over in Northwest Portland. Right. Um, they're over the bottle bill. And then I don't, you know, like on public transportation and things like that, you have people walking with know, huge I bags know, and get hit I with know. the bag. You're just trying to okay. be compassionate with it, but I you know. don't want to get hit with a, a bag of soda, yeah, you know, yeah, dripping yeah, soda. Yeah. So it, it, it is an issue that it, need to be, we need to discuss it again. Because you, in all due respect, uh, you know, at least it gives the, the homeless something to do. Right, right, you right. You have my point? Mm -hmm. And that's that, that little cash that they get. It's not, it's really not a much, that, that much, mm -hmm. really. You would think, I mean, well, why, why go around going in the garbage picking a, a soil can that's only worth five cents? 
You know, yeah, but ten people, cents now. Yeah, but ten <laughs> cents. But even ten cents. Okay. But the bottom line is that you know, uh, you know how much a hit of fentanyl costs? Mm. Eighty cents downtown. So Eighty cents. See, that's, that's what I'm saying. So now they get the money to buy that part. Right. So we got to cut that piece off aspect of it. I mean, that's one of the considerations. So that that's why that question it kind well, of seems. Fent- I'm talking about the fentanyl. Now. Well, well, the <laughs> bottles. So the bottles are paying for the fentanyl. And people right. are using their their food stamps, not using the water that they're getting from their okay, food. You okay, know, okay. that they're using that we're okay. we're giving the money for. Okay. They're using it just for the redemption value, okay. so they can uh-huh. buy uh, drugs with it so okay. it's it's a very kind of unique central city mm-hmm. problem where we're having this issue and i've heard a lot of people complain about it in um you know like northwest portland downtown well, yeah. portland state well, and it hasn't happen. really gotten out to the suburbs yet but it's coming well like you said it, it, it is a draw to a certain degree and it's not, in all due respect those are the middle class and the, the upper class that don't want people getting in their, their garbages and whatever right coming in their neighborhood because then they do other things if you will but we need to revisit that piece you know what i'm saying point it's as if to say okay fine uh, come up with some creativity kind of deal because if you can let's say for instance if they were able to get some bottles and this that and the other and go to the local McDonald's or something like that and buy some food you know buy a hamburger or something you know what I'm yeah. saying you get your cash at, at McDonald's or get your cash so you can pick up some food or something you know what I mean because because they don't give you when those got people that are standing in the line they want that money now mm. and like you said uh, they may, may want to buy the drugs and whatever well we need to cut that off to a certain degree but but at the same time if it keeps them busy if it keeps them busy keeps them out of trouble if it keeps them out of trouble and if they buy food for it if you will or something of that nature or clothing or things of that nature that's a different ball game mm-hmm. but but that needs to be discussed we need yeah. to sit down and discuss but i like your points about but, it but so it's so, an issue so especially like so district four we'll, we'll go over to there now it's right. like that's all the west side of portland right. and selwood and the city and this and it's in downtown downtown so it's in all everything Portland. it goes from linton all the way on the west side everything okay. west of the willamette okay um down to basically dunthorpe okay um and then the west hills but then we also get a little chunk of uh selwood selwood you get so we selwood? get selwood reed east moreland and west moreland a little, a little, a little more sophisticated of well i think i think i think the <laughs> charter well, commission wanted to group all the rich people <laughs> yeah uh, in, in, well, in, yeah, in one that's district. okay that's okay that's fair. yeah that's fair that's fair and so um candidates that have um announced um i know chad lichen is uh running in district four okay um i haven't met him yet um in person but i met him at a neighborhood association meeting mm-hmm. um sarah silky is running also she i've met her uh giving testimony about the organizational chart mm-hmm. um that the city voted on um who else is running over there uh moses ross he's mm-hmm. been real active in um democratic politics i know that he's supported a lot of black candidates in the past okay he's the president of the multnomah village neighborhood association okay uh, i know that he served as uh, lou frederick's uh a treasurer back in the day on one of his races okay mm. um who else do we have over there um now that's that's district four that's district four the west side okay um and then at uh renee gonzalez's campaign launch um there's actually a police officer uh, named eli arnold mm. uh that got in the race also mm. so we're bringing the law enforcement uh element to that to that race uh he comes from that selwood uh, yeah, right, 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 right. And Renee comes, that's Southeast Portland. Southeast. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, Renee right. and Mingus yeah, both yeah, live yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But we, we, we've also got uh, a couple of rumors of people that are considering a district four run. Um, and that would be um, uh, Sharon uh, Mirren. Mirren? Sharon Mirren? Yeah, she's, oh, she's in, county. in the county. She's yeah. in the county. But she's termed out. She, 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 that's right. Yeah, she's termed out. Well, maybe she can run for the other, the other so seat. So she's, uh, from what I've heard, is like she's eyeing District Four. So those are two interesting. We've got the cop coming in, and uh, well, maybe she can run. Maybe she can run for. Um, let's see. Wait, I'm thinking about uh, District Two. Well, she's she's on the west side though. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. 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 Good. So that's Dan Ryan is up there in she, District she's Two. She's probably the most active person on the county right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, she's well, definitely well, holding oh, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh-huh. JVP to well, account. Well, in all due respect, she has a resume. Mm-hmm. She being, being an ER nurse, she's she's right there with all the issues. Lawyer also. See, so she's ha- she has a solid resume. Yeah. To deal with the issues mm-hmm. of that county. So as far as I'm concerned, maybe go back to the county charter because I was sitting on I was sitting on that board at one point in time. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would reconsider, you know, giving us a, giving an extension. 
right. <laughs> if I was sitting on the charter, because she's the only one that's active enough to talk about the real issues. I think uh, I think uh, Julia Brim Edwards is active. Well, also. Julia, well, she's she's got two hats now. Yeah, she's got you know she she's a member of the, the school board, if you will. County. All she uh, needs to do is run for the city, and she'll have them all. Yeah, but she's <laughs> sitting sitting, at the, as one say, sitting on the school board deal, <laughs> and, we, and we got uh, mo most of our major problems are still at the school district. I didn't like the idea of that transferring that way. We got work to do. Yeah, I mean th those folks that are sitting down there with her, she should continue being the chair of the of the school board the school board and solve some of those problems yeah and it, because that's our futures those kids yeah and we've always had problems with portland public schools and so now she's got all that expertise i remember when her dad uh, I, I, when I when i talked about her dad way back when when i knew him and you know she, she was very much interested in politics and this and like and she got involved now she's she, she's a seasoned politician mm -hmm. for that matter but you know her her expertise her resume is portland public schools mm. that's a tough job oh yeah and I now mean, they, just have, they have deal with the strike oh and we need Which, we need that person if you will that was uh, that was that was wild um you know i i, I pretty much stayed out of it uh but um yeah that was that, that was wild well we got the wrong superintendent to start with i mean the guy didn't have the background he, he, he resigned the, he, he resigned and and then he re and notice how he resigned he well came in and he resigned at the last minute if you will my, not staying there to get this uh, this thing solved my, my my question again i didn't really uh you know delve into this issue yeah um but like why did the why did they start the strike during the summer i know yeah I, I mean, because to me, it makes it feel like you're using the parents and the kids as like bargaining chips by doing it when they did. Well, it was a timing thing. You know, they, they were off. You know, on vacation, the schools out. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, you know, like, well, you know, hey, I mean, <laughs> uh, simple one. I mean, if their arguments were so good, it's not about keeping the kids out yeah, of but, school. But you, or, but you had to have teachers marching. You know, you just can't have them sitting in the classroom. I mean, you, what you gonna do? No. Well, I mean, kids. I would have liked to. I, I personally, I would have liked to see them start. Uh, the ne renegotiation, um, like in August. Yeah, but, but but you got school. I mean, you got class. You don't have not in August, you know. Oh, not in August. Okay, not in August. Okay, not in August. They're on summer hey, break. They're on I, summer I, break. The kids are on I, summer break. The parents I, 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 are already have plans to uh, make arrangements for their kids. Well, I think August. Was a, I think it was a good push by those teachers, you know, because they're sitting in that classroom. Okay? It's true. They're sitting in that classroom, and they were the answers, and they were always cut off. Normally, the administration was pretty well running the running basically in the classroom. And they need to get their butt out of there. It's, and, it's about yeah. the teachers because they know what the issues are. And from what I understand, also again, I didn't look at the numbers, but there's a lot of bloat in the administration. Oh, very much a so. Lot big of time. Big time. Like everybody's got an assistant oh, up there. The assistants have assistants. Oh, up there. This, this, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so this is so that this was a good push. So see, now we need her sitting right there at that school district. Yeah. See what I'm saying? But see, but now she's she's spending a, quite a bit of time. Uh, at uh, at the county now aspect of it, so she's OJT and mm -hmm. she's got to read more more paperwork. She, because Peterson is, in all due respect, is having a tough time. She's very she's very much. Oh, oh, I don't see her basically getting another another term, it, it, because unless she really rushed to get the business. I I've invited her on the show, uh, on several times, but the bottom line, they they don't follow up. She's got a tough job right now, really tough. And then, but Marin, getting back to Sharon. To, to Marion, I mean, she she's got the background. She she's keeping the county up yeah. at the table, yeah. and she's forced the issue, if you will, of getting the county as, as far as the county working with the city. Yeah, that that wasn't that wasn't uh, Peterson charge. That was her. Yeah, and she's out there. You can see her out there, and the, she's out there in the public every day. I mean, she's she's an ER and she she's out there dealing with her issues, mm -hmm. and I, I I take my hat off to her. She's doing a good job. So you're saying she's thinking about running for a district? Uh, uh, district four, and then um, the biggest fundraiser in District Four is uh, Olivia Clark. Uh, she her background is uh, she uh, she comes from Sa like Salem, like working in the legislature. Oh, okay, okay, um, kind of okay, like okay. assistants. But, but, but do they have resumes? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> she's raised sixteen or uh, eighteen thousand dollars, so that's uh, that's 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 pretty good. But again, I'm still saying it's not going to be about the money this time. I mean, I'm, I want to be looking at resumes now. If, if, as far as I'm concerned, we should make room, if you will, to make sure that if, if we have folks filing to run for office and they've got good solid resumes, but they don't know how to raise money, we should make we should have a discussion on that. 
I think that's part of what these people small, an opportunity. small donor program. Yes, we got to do something. Let's, let's talk about that. What about the small donor program? You said the, the, oh, in terms of how it's, it's pretty well organized. You got me? Um, let's talk about that small donor program. You got you got a minute? Let's, let's talk about that now. We got some time. Okay. Um, First off, where, where, where does it exist? Is that the one that, 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 that one can apply for and all this other stuff that's right now you can do it you can get you can go out there and get it so uh with, with a small do like this this will be interesting but um so the small donor program basically uh the city uh provides nine to one matching contributions. nine to one yes okay for every dollar you raise you get let's say right if you have for every dollar you raise if you if you raise uh ten dollars it'll be nine times ten right or 90 bucks right 90 bucks so as opposed to 10 bucks 100 total and um, and then the maximum donation level is three hundred and fifty dollars. Three hundred and fifty dollars. Um, and what about the maximum? No. There, there's no um, so there's tiers to it, and my numbers might be off a little bit, okay. but your first uh, two hundred and fifty donations gets you a hundred thousand dollar match from the city. Okay. And then once you get to seven hundred donors, you get another hundred thousand, and then when I think you get to like twelve hundred donors, you get another hundred thousand. That's three hundred thousand dollars. No, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's too much or too little. That's uh, first. That's too much. I mean, you. you got, well, okay, but um, but, but and, there's a hundred. And, and where, where are they getting that money from? General Fund. It sounds like it's called taxpayers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> taxpayers. Yeah. So that is a problem. Yeah, that is right. a problem for a lot of people. So is should the taxpayers be funding to get the message out of people they did, they don't agree with? You know, it's like, uh, I mean, you know, I hate to throw out the term, like, what if a Nazi ran? Like a legitimate, like a Nazi. Well, where's the motivation to knock on the doors now? I mean, it's kind of hard trying to knock on the doors now but, because of the other issues that we have. But the, the number, I think, like, so District 4, for example, they have uh, 109,000 voters. Okay. I, so, I mean, even if you're looking at, like, let's take 300, let's say you get $330,000, you're only spending three dollars per voter to contact to contact each voter. Gee, man. so I, I mean that's like that's three postcards. You know what I mean? Wow, wow. Well, inflation. Now you, now you bring up another point. How do we get the media involved? Well, the media is going. If the media was involved in this tape, it would be their responsibility because they're basically getting out to the advertisers. Basically, the, the the businesses are basically supporting that piece. Got my point? Well. We're going into election season, though, so the biggest buyers are going to be campaigns now. Yeah, but, but I'm still saying that they that they should be involved from the standpoint of interviewing these candidates. Yeah, see, interview that's that'd be part of that job aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, in most cases, that's free; doesn't cost anything. Right. So I think, and and that's what they that's what we do nowadays to get the information, and that is from the media. So, so we can maybe look at this. We don't need no three hundred thousand dollars to run for city council, right? Well, yeah. Again, if the media was more uh, involved in getting to know the candidates, right. I agree with that. And the Portland Mercury just did a really good job um, doing like a little candidate profile. I think it's good. I think they do a good job. They do. They do believe in like Willamette grassroots week. activism. Um, you know, but. When we're going in here into 2024, we've right. got um, a presidential election. Right, right, um, right. We've got, and we haven't even brought up anything about what James Manning is doing, mm -hmm. running for Secretary mm -hmm. of State, yeah, uh, yeah. brother out of Eugene, mm -hmm. um, uh, running against uh, Tobias Reed. Uh, we've got uh, the Metro race coming up. Right. Um, uh, Lynn Peterson. I don't know if she's declared for that congressional race or not, but Lynn, Lynn Peterson is termed out over at Metro, so... Um, I believe a couple of the current commissioners are looking at taking over a lens spot over there. Okay, okay. Uh, so, you know, so we've got that election. Um, we've got uh, the two congressional ones that are big. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the special election for the county number two. And mm -hmm. then we have city council. We have the mayor's mm -hmm. race. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we have the president's race. Yeah, right, right, right. right so right, right. Um, there's a lot of competition for that 
you know, that media slice right, or right, right. for the media's political right, slice right, of the play. Right, 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 right. Well, we're part of that. Yeah. yeah well, well this is the grassroots. Yeah, this, yeah we, got, we got the visual, you got radio, you know what I mean? And then you got the, the newspapers aspect of it. And uh, we used to have a, a newspaper that was free big time, and that was the, the Tribune. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it's like anything else. They got to get that revenue to print those papers, you know what I mean? But but in some cases, you can pick those papers up still, by the way. Yeah. I noticed in, in, at Safeway, they were, they, they, you could pick them there, you can pick them up at Fred. I mean, it, it, it pays. You pay just like you have the Oregonian aspect of it. But it, they, they're there. But you got the Oregonian, you got the Tribune, you got Willamette Week, you got the Mercury. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the major ones. Yeah. You got me? And then you got the radio stations. You know what I mean? And don't forget about the scanner. Yeah, the scanner's well, no, still gone. That's gone. That's gone. Is it? No, Bernie. Bernie's closed up. He's closed. He's closed his facility. He's closed his facility. And uh, I think he's going to try to get some sort of a format on social media aspect of it. But but the paper is gone. Okay. Yeah, it's really a sad note. Yeah, it is. I mean, the, now the Portland Observer is still there. And they're still there, and they're still handing the paper. They're small, but but they're getting there. You know and then the, the uh, Asian got, Asian, Asian yep, paper yep, also. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, the the Asian reporter. Yes. And it's, it's a that's a good solid piece. It really gets to that that particular group of folks. Mm -hmm. But uh, but 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 Bernie was covering across the board, and and the and the Observer was too for that particular area. Mm -hmm. at one point, which was good. We used to have a paper called El Hispanic at one point. Yeah, in time. Uh, that I, was. I remember uh, that. Yeah. Who was that? Uh, uh, Melanie and. Uh, Clara, mm -hmm. Clara, yeah, Clara, yeah, Clara, uh, Clara, Clara yeah. Andrews, yeah, I mean, I remember, Melanie I remember, Davis and Clara Andrews. I remember them. But they were back in the early two yeah, thousands. Yeah, and that was a good that was a good piece because they were able to print it in Spanish, if you will, and and English. At Por the same supuesto. Time. And in fact, when I when I was publisher of the Portland Observer, that was my direction. I was going to basically do the papers in the, in each of the bilingual the so -called bilingual group. Well, that was one of the things I used to learn Spanish was bilingual uh, right? newspapers, yeah. just having the same article, right, right, you right. Know, side by side. Right. That, that, so my point is that media plays quite a role, and 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 I, the people like the idea of holding that paper mm -hmm. with a cup of coffee, you know what I mean, you know, yeah. or sitting out in the park, you know what I mean, reading a deal, kind of a deal. Hopefully we can get that, put that back on the table when we start talking about uh, the rejuvenation of the City of Roses, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I think that's part of it. Yeah, that's, that's part of the part deal, of aspect of it. So, so yeah, so so uh, getting back to the, the whole issue of, uh, of the taxpayers paying for the races, uh, that's, that's, that's a concern. So, so yeah, so it looks like... Um, but that, it's already there now. That funding there. opens up February 1st. Mm -hmm. um, and so they'll, you know, it's like that's the first time you can submit all of your donations. And then. Uh, so, so, so right now, you can basically, you pick it up, you can pick the monies up, and then you have your own bank account. That's Correct. all. You have to open up the right bank account. Correct. Right? And then the, the, that that's supervised, right? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you take that information and give it back to the uh, to the source? So they can publish the names of those folks who Ye have access? Yeah, so the treasurer is supposed to file a report with the Secretary of State, um, I believe, like quarterly at this point of the year. Like now? Can, can you get access to those names? Yeah, that's okay. how we got all these uh, numbers of how much people have gotten in so far. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. And okay. so that first round of, uh, you know, the, the first round of reporting just kind of came out. Um, as it gets closer to election season, I think they... Uh, come out more frequently everything okay. from like maybe once a month to like maybe it goes down to weekly mm -hmm. uh, once, mm -hmm. once it gets down mm -hmm. to crunch time yeah you know i noticed it, I, I, but i noticed that uh uh I, I was looking at an interview with uh renee not too long ago gonzalez running for mayor when he finally running mayor and then the, the word got out and he picked up uh two thousand donors yeah right off the bat and then and supposedly uh just small donors he was saying uh, so what kind of numbers uh, what kind of numbers is he had? As if to say he's already got his campaign, so he's not looking at trying to raise three hundred thousand dollars to run that. Run. Yeah, so um, he's so actually, on yeah, that, like like you said, so uh, when Renee uh, announced, uh, quite a few uh, packs came out in supporting him. Uh, Keep Portland safe. Okay. Uh, Portland Metro firefighters. Okay. Um, as well as labor unions, the Iron Workers District Council of the uh, Pacific Northwest. Now, they're limited too, though. Aren't they limited? I think so. much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Layuna, local 737. Okay. And local 48, the electricians. Yeah, yeah. See, so, so my point is that, and, and right up front, with the reason why he was able to get that is he's active. Yeah. 
his resume. Mm -hmm. He's out there. He's actually doing the job. Yeah, I think the firefighters and, are really happy with yeah, him. Yeah, well, yeah, he's, he's happy. You know? And then there were some things there that, in all due respect, that Joanne kind of got was very much involved because she she basically appointed the first black fire chief there, and and that's interesting. She created that whole issue with the uh, with the uh, the security thing. People, the, the, the enforcement piece, walking the streets, if you will. Oh, uh, Portland or, Street response. Portland Street response. I thought those were those were good, some good things. But the, was, but as far as the fire chief, I never saw. I mean, they, 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 I, they, I, they, you know, me being downtown, I did, I did meet her a couple of times. Yeah, but my point and, is that she, she wasn't an active chief. Let's put it that way. And but there were some reasons for that. I mean, it's as if to say Joanne was the active person, <laughs> you know, and the poor lady didn't have the opportunity cause, because it was a pretty conservative group. It was a bunch of, bunch of male guys that were there, and you know that's the way it was. But but you, when you get in that kind of an environment, you got to be a strong leader when you when you hit that table. See, when you hit that table, you got to look in their eyes and say, "I'm the one." No, <laughs> you see, yeah. but she didn't have that kind of a background. I'm talking about that chief, and so they had to make some changes. Come a point, and and, and I'm still thinking that. Uh, the same thing with the Portland Police Department aspect of it. Uh, I, I, is a, they, they've had an African American who was the chief, but unfortunately, he too was not kind of like in the background because he was basically in the mayor's office. Mm -hmm. But Bob, Bob is not in just the mayor's office. He's a former policeman. He's the new chief. No. And uh, so you see a different different shift. You don't you don't see the union head as much as. Uh, the union head happens to have been a Portland police person aspect of it, but he's going to be he's going to be like a first sergeant, and he's a kind of he has that atmosphere about it. So he's working with the chief, but he knows his his role. Yeah. See, so Bob Day is going to do the job, and Bob's going to I, I think I don't like his his attitude and how he's doing it aspect of it, and uh, I saw some, I saw some, they they did some some things at the the recent city council aspect of it, talking about some of the activities. And whatever, and I could see that. Well, they're, they're increasing the foot patrols. Yeah, they, 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 well, we gotta we gotta reinforce it. And you know, they, they're not just police; they're law enforcement officers. See, the, we, we need to know that they're law enforcement. We basically we basically put the laws on the books, and then we tell them this is what you want you to reinforce. Mm -hmm. And I think if we spend a little bit more time doing that, and give the law enforcement that we have today. To build up accordingly, but but train them to understand their law enforcement. They're not everything, you know. They're, they're not every everything. Trying to deal with this and this and this. And they got too many too many things. There were too many things on the table. It just got out, gotten out of hand. Yeah, and I, I you know I I know a lot of it flows from like the homeless crisis, yeah, and the drug yeah, crisis. See? And um, I do know that there are morale issues yeah. uh, in the police department yeah. because yeah. they don't feel like uh, you know the. They do it too many things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they're law enforcement, you can read the the laws. <laughs> no. Once you know what the laws are, that's what you enforce. Now on this outside deal, the county needs to get more involved. That's that's the other problem. And what does the city do? See what I'm saying? So we just need to get our act together because when you start thinking about the whole issue with the rioting and things of that nature, we had laws on the books that said if you wanted to march downtown, you had to get a permit. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and also insurance to make sure if anything happens, we, the public didn't have to pay for it. Well, we got out of that because the folks who were basically were supposed to be in charge didn't yeah. understand what that was all about. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, you know, and, and I hate to put it that way, but, but that's just the way it is. And So we got to get back to that. Now, and just on a, just as a sidebar, now Wheeler, is un, he's understanding some stuff. He's gone through the OJT piece. Mm -hmm. And all due respect, he should have stayed right there. <laughs> Got me? To a certain degree, because if you notice, you notice when they, were start, they started talking about when, when the public passed this new criteria piece and talked about basically putting the, uh, uh, putting the offices in downtown Portland, you know, mm -hmm. he basically took what they, what the public said, this is what they wanted to do. Yeah. And then he implemented that. Like but government, the other, governor's task force. That's for right. Recommendations and, and, from and, and, and then the idea that, no, you're going to be, we're going to be moving temporarily over here, keep doing your job, but we're going to go on and refurbish this deal because we can save the money. Well, no, I was, that was great. That was, he, he knew what, they didn't like that. Mm -hmm. Because all those folks was trying to figure out, what do I, what, what am I going to do? 
Well, no, if you're going to run for office, go and run for office. You got the best best seat in town. Right. You, you can promote yourself just, <laughs> just being a just city councilor. Just doing your job and yeah, sending just, out No, 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 not doing your job, just sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and in fact, it's really a sad note because as I, as I look at and I look at this stuff, and as I see these people commenting, they're basically just highlighting themselves. You know what I mean? The only person that's there, that, as far as I'm concerned, that has something to say was Renee. I mean, he's at, you know that you can picture him not just sitting there because he's on the news all the time. He's got a clear mandate in his head. Yeah, you can see that. And on the, and on the streets. Mm -hmm. He's out there. Yeah. And, but the rest are not. I've actually seen him uh, riding Max before. Yes, yes. You, know. you, you see the guy, you know, so so, so that's that's what I'd like to see the other. But no, the rest of them uh, are just <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor, poor Matt. <laughs> Carmen, Carmen Rubio is rumored to be running for mayor also, and she's expected to an announce in January. Yeah, well, you know, you all do respect as a hand down. You know, I, I hate to put it this way. Right now, that Renee's the guy. He He's earned the rights to do it. This is not just a run for The guy has been working from day one just since he's gotten on there. I mean, I, I mean, he's a very assertive kind of a guy, and plus the fact he knows how to read. You know, you know it's like a, <laughs> you, it's like a dictionary. You go to law school for a dictionary, right? Am I right? Right. You got I me. Mean, you do your research. You do your because that, a lot that's, of reading. Isn't that law? Isn't yeah. that law? A lot of reading. Yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> a lot <laughs> of reading. So this has been good. So this is, this is good. Okay, so we we got that. We got into that piece aspect of it. Right, what about the metro piece? Did you talk a little bit about so, the, uh, Peterson? Uh, Lynn Peterson. I I don't know if she's officially declared for uh the congressional race yeah, yeah, for yeah, the congressional yeah, race yeah, right right but she was one of the first people i heard that yeah, was going to do yeah. it and i know that she's, she's gonna do it she's, she's termed out yeah uh, uh i guess uh her and maxine dexter seem a lot alike um mm -hmm. with the i mean i guess maxine comes from the healthcare yeah, world right. um peterson comes from the transit world um i met her back in 2001 the first right, time right. uh i think she was like a washington county commissioner right right, right. Um, but she's she's a pretty active person too, yeah she, she's a hands-on kind of a yeah. person too and she she really cares about transportation oh, yeah that's well, her she, niche. she knows yeah that's a dish and and she she i mean she, and she knows those those the, the jobs yeah. that are sitting there and and you know and all due respect she's probably the, at the top as far as i'm concerned really she's the top candidate as far as her resume is concerned okay see she's the top person you know, uh, Shashila, uh, you know, all due respect, she had the opportunity. She should have stayed there and she spent a couple of terms or whatever because because they were having problems. at the, They had problems at the county. Everybody knew. Steve Dean, uh, I, you know, if the readers have a chance to find it, but Steve Dean did write an article uh, on her. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. On yeah. her uh, time, her resume at mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. county. I saw that. And it, it was it was hard. It, 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 was, it, it was scathing. He was, but he was telling the facts. He was giving up the facts aspect of it. You know, do you respect? And District 2, think about it. District 2 is the most, I mean, it's, it's probably the largest, uh, the problem. You got, you got, the, you, you got the, the, quote, the black community. You got all kinds of situations there. We, we've got uh, the North Portland aspect of it over there. And, uh, but bottom line is, and you look at the facilities, like the eating facilities for seniors. It's a sad note, mm -hmm. you know. And you look at, but you look at the eating facilities in other areas in other districts. I mean, it's, 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 there's no comparison. Yeah, you know what I mean. So she has some work. To, the, the whole issue with the gang problem and mm -hmm. the drug problem, this, that, and the other. She was never there. She's she's not she's not contributed. Now everybody recognized the fact that her sister is a congressperson yeah. in, in Seattle, Washington. Right. But they also have seen the, some of the comments her sister has made. Yeah. So so that's going to be some other thing. So she should be doing. Had she been doing her work where she was sitting, then she she would have been would a have spoke for itself. She'd been a spokesperson. She's got a law degree and this that and the other, but she's been a minority on all a number of jobs. But then I question that piece. I mean, who brought that to the table? Yeah. <laughs> See, and and you know, and and so 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 my point is that uh, uh, just bring the resume. I'm just going. We're just talking facts right now, Tommy. Mm -hmm. And and again, I'd like to invite her on the show to to say, okay, fine. What do you bring to the table? Yeah, we need to be uh, much more aggressive going into the new year and getting guests on the show. Oh, we got to because no, you know, and, and just uh, just one note. You think about Earl. Earl's done. That's why I said pull out the, the voters pamphlet when he was running mm -hmm. and look at this resume. Yeah, <laughs> the guy was very active. Always. So all, all a person has to do, if you really want to run for his seat, how do you compare it? Right. 
Put it next to yours. Read them all, too. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. The yeah read them all. But, you, but, but read them, but put yours on the side. Mm -hmm. And if you can't compare, don't run. You're wasting <laughs> your time. <laughs> you should Right. You know, you should be right up front with you. Yeah. We need leadership now if, in fact, we're going to get back with the City of Roses. Yeah. And I'm, at, I'm getting at my point in life. I want to. I would be to sit downtown and have a cup of coffee and read the paper and maybe I hear, hear a few orators, you know, talking about certain. And not worry and, about breathing and anymore. Not worry about breathing <laughs> and sucking up all of the the drugs and stuff like yeah. that, and not be able to get to my car. You know what I mean? If I want to go downtown and 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 go to a restaurant or something like that, you know. But I can't do that now. No, I can. Oh yeah, I I, I know I, what you I mean. I will. I can. Yeah, I I, I have the back. I have the resume. <laughs> I can go anywhere I want to go. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, and another another uh, name that's been swirling around. I've I've heard uh, his name in a couple of places, but it just made me think about it. Is uh, Sam Adams is out there, the former mayor? Sam he Adams. should. Sam, um, Sam should be active. He's good. I've he's I've good. I thought that he's always lived in the same place over uh, in Northeast, which would be District Two. Yeah. Um, but I heard a rumor, and you know, these are all just rumors I'm, I'm sharing here, is that, that he was going to run in District 3, the Kremlin. Oh, okay. Yeah. You said the Kremlin. You like that. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> the People's Republic of Southeast Portland. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Well, that's an interesting piece. I like I, oh, yeah. okay, okay. But like you said, too, Sam, no, Sam's, Sam's all right as a rock, you know. He, he's, a, he's a Vera Cash trainee. He loves Portland. I mean, this, and, and, and he, he knows it really well. He, he's, he's a very, very reincarnated. Let's yes. put it that way. Yeah, because she was quite a mayor, very popular person, and he was there, and mm -hmm. and he helped her out, and vice versa. You know, she she came from the legislature, as you know, mm -hmm. and but the bottom line, Sam was there every day. You Chief know? of staff. And, and, and so I mean, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm gonna keep that other note on the side. <laughs> but no, but he's you know he he would be very active. Yeah. In fact, uh, he he'd be he, he'd be a very active. Uh, Person running for Congress. True. I mean, I mean, he he'd be a very, he's got the background. True. Trust me. True. He's got the background with no problem. Mm -hmm. So Sam, if you got a moment, come on to the show. In fact, <laughs> in fact, he was he was the only person that um, when I was very active in the uh, with with Clara Peoples on the Juneteenth piece, mm -hmm. he was the, he was the only person that was uh, identified as one of the uh, uh, the, the uh, yeah, on the on the on the parade. He was, a, he was a grand marshal one day. Oh, wow, okay. And, he, and, he, and, and I drove him, and he he drove the, he rode in my car. Okay. And we chatted quite a bit, and I got a lot of respect for Sam. For Sam, he's he's very active, very open about this, that, and the other, and uh, so, yeah, he'd be a solid candidate. Yeah. So Sam, come on to the show. <laughs> you do anyway. You know what I mean? And if we can bring this thing back to the table because you do have a resume. Yes, he does. We can use you. We can use you in getting Portland back to the table <laughs> and getting this, this, getting this. Okay? You can definitely do, do this piece. You don't need to run for mayor. You need to run for Congress. Yeah. So trust me. <laughs> and he'd, be, he'd, be, he'd, he'd, get, he'd get a vote. He would. You know, I, I, you know, he does have his base. Yeah, he has, he has his base. He has his base. You, you, had, you got that from John, too, by the way. <laughs> 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 But John, John, trust me. I want to. I want to. Even at this point in time, I really, I really thank you for being here with us. You know, really, you, you, you really, you've solved one of the problems that I was looking for. And, okay. And I got you. I like to solve problems. Oh well, you got the problem. But see, you got a resume. I, I like to solve and, problems. And then your your mom has a resume because you, you, she, <laughs> she made sure you had a resume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and your she father. Keeps crafting and your father, problems. your father had a resume. Yeah. And he made sure you had a resume. So, so you had, you had quite, you had, you had, you had, you had a couple of people that are neat parents. Your dad's not here anymore, but but I knew him and I knew his brother too, by the way. Uh, Cal. Or, Cal. Yeah. I knew Cal real well. Cal yeah. was there. You know, he was he was out there with the fellas. You know, mm -hmm. so he was, he was he was a good guy. And but the bottom line is that uh, yeah, I really appreciate the fact that we found you. You know, we, we just, it was just something that we just kind of got in there and and you, you appeared on the show with me and with uh, with uh, who was that? That was uh, Shanna Jenna. Uh, Donna Palmer, Palmer right. Donna, yeah, John, John, Donna, Donna, Donna Max's daughter, and we did a piece. Remember, yeah. we did a piece on that, and uh, then I just happened to, boom, we, we used to call me up. Did you call me? Up? Yeah, that's right. I sent you the survey. Yeah, that's right. You sent me that survey. You sent me that survey. I said, "Wow, there I've been looking. Go. I've been looking for someone to to get in this get in this swamp with me." Yes, yes. <laughs> not too many. No, not too many people are gathering for the swamp. But by George, we got a lot of folks who are wanting to participate. Let's hit that. Hit that. Hit that. Uh, yeah, so you know, here's the QR code for the survey. Uh, this is a December survey that I run every quarter. Um, 
it's about a five minute survey. It's completely anonymous. You can uh, do it on your phone. Um, I encourage you to share it with other people, but just hold your phone up to the screen. Um, a little yellow window will open up. Uh, start with turning your camera on, hold it up to the screen. A little yellow window will open up. You, you just touch that yellow window and the survey will pop up. Just automatic. Completely uh, completely okay. anonymous. Okay, okay. Yep. Yeah, but especially, in all due respect, especially those seniors that are out there right up front with you sitting there, you might want to tell the, the facilities folks to maybe put that up there for you. Yeah, that they, would be, yeah. They, they, that can do be, that, they can do that during the lunch. Yes, I mean, yes, just, that would be you know, awesome. So, I'd so love to hear from the seniors. I mean, so. Please contact those seniors. I'm gonna, we're going to try to see if we can hit those I facilities. Those I have a facilities. list. Would you do that? Yes. Okay, and I'll, I'll be a part of that. In fact, let's, let's go and visit them. Okay, and then in, in January, I'll, I'll 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 come out, come to the show, and share their uh, all the responses. Good. Uh, but just just right now, what we have so far is uh, the first question on the on the survey is, uh, do you feel that Portland is on the wrong track or the right track? Right. Uh, we've got 190 responses for that. Uh, Eighty-five point three percent of those people um, have said that Portland is on the wrong track. Okay. Um, so you know it's important if it's go, go down the list. What's up, since you're going. And then I, I want to do the last. I want to let okay, people know right. what the last question is. Also. Okay. okay. What was that? And so the last question um, asked is, "What's your political ideology?" What does that mean? Um, so does that? Do you consider yourself uh, a liberal? And uh, 20% of people said they were liberal. Okay. Um, do you consider yourself progressive? 12% of people said that they're progressive. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. And then um, conservative, uh, 17% said that they were conservative. Okay. 50.5% identified as moderate. Moderate. Yes. So, what is the definition of moderate? What, what's it? What's it? What's it? Well, I, what's a moderate? Uh, that's tricky. Rich or poor or whatever. I, 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 don't, I think it, it cuts across uh, economic lines, but I, I just think, um, to me, um, I think the majority of people in Portland uh, are liberal. Um, I thought that it was just you know it was considered like a liberal encla enclave, um, and. So, at least over the last 10 years, um, progressive ideology has seeped into... Well, since you're jumping in those categories, let's go down the list. What's the liberal? What's your definition of a liberal? Whew. Um, <laughs> so, Non-affiliated, maybe? I mean, well, the, uh, that uh, no, no, they tend to be in uh, the Democratic Party. Democrat, okay. Um, and I... I I, I think it's kind of like I, I think liberal would would be the traditional definition of a of a Democrat. You know, like pro labor. Okay. Um, uh, well, you know, it used to be like uh, anti war, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, freedom of speech. Um, what else? Uh, 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 a lot of freedom. Within anti anti uh, conservatives, you know, well, like freedom of choice. Okay, you know, and um, I think a lot of like even like the like even like the drug stuff, like f you know, freedom for that. And then so I think like progressives uh, are are sort of the ideological wing. Like, what does that mean? I mean, I'm sorry, of the of the lay person of the I, of, ideological. What what, what does well, that mean? So that means that like. Um, they desire to be change agent, change okay. agents. Change agents. Yes. Change agents from the specific. From and then you know specifically like um, policies that have come out of like progressive um, progressive ideology is like uh, harm reduction. Uh, yeah. When you talk about like drug use. Okay. Um, so uh, some people call that like enabling, but um, okay. it's you know the theory is like harm reduction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, I'm going to do a better definition of it on next show. Because well, I actually had somebody tell me when they were filling this out that they had okay. to pull up uh, okay. definitions well, of it. Well, you said important. It's it's clear, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's clear in my know, head, but know. like I haven't had to articulate yeah, okay. it before. Um, and then I think Go like on this. moderate. We got more. Yeah, keep going. I think the moderate would be um, uh, pragmatic. Pragmatic. Yeah. And Practical. Then, what do you mean? Pra like, yeah, give me a just, sample. So, so what? So what? It creates a, the the divide between progressive and uh, moderate. Right. Is outcomes versus ideology. Okay. And so it's like 
we wanted like the there was all these ideas about like criminal justice reform right. and right. everything like that okay. Okay. Um, a whole bunch of what this tells me is like a whole bunch of people don't think it works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know okay. everything from like legalizing drug to, yeah. to getting rid right. of bail. Yeah, that, I, I'm not taking a position okay. on it. That, that's the moderate. But but uh, that, that that those were progressive oh, ideologies progressive. that came out. Okay. 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 And what percentage did you? Uh, so 12.4 percent uh, considered okay. them okay. progressive, and I think like majority of people are were liberal here in Portland. And then you know, like defund the police. That was that right. was a that was a political ideology. Moderates, just normal people living, um, are realizing that some of those they're bearing the consequences of some okay. of those ideologies. Okay. And then you know, traditionally, it was a government that bared the right, consequences right, right, of the right, right, ideology. Right, 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 right. But now, uh, the consequences of like housing first, or you can camp anywhere. The businesses okay. are bearing the burden of that idea. And what educational level would you place them in? Um, I, I, I um, that, that, that I would think that as an educational level, that, that yeah, be. I would, I would, I would probably get. I mean, I, I don't have any science behind this, but I would tend that um, progressives tend to be college educated, okay, um, liberal arts degrees. Um, I would, I would also bet that they're probably new to Portland, okay, over the last 10, 10 years, okay. Um, I think more, uh, your moderates, uh, you're going to have the full spectrum of, uh, incomes, um, Okay. you know, everything from, um, you know, poor people to, um, very rich people. Okay. Moderate. Um, it's moderate. Okay. Yeah. And then with, uh, with the conservatives, I'm, I'm, I'm probably guessing those are going to be business owners. Okay. Okay. And, um, you know, yeah, but what about conservative thinking? And then, you know, the older you get, you, you get a little bit more conservative. You yeah. Know? I want law enforcement, you know. <laughs> I'm a cop here today. Well, I've, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot. <laughs> and, you know, I think, like, Portland was the epitome of a Gen X city. So, like, when, when Portland really hit its growth stride, it was Gen X. You know, basically, everybody that was born between 1970 uh, yeah. and 1980. Everybody, everybody pushed that, yeah. Right? Got, <laughs> but, but yeah. like, it, it was all the things that were, like, Gen X was known for. Like, right. you know, like, really pushing, like, small independent bands, right. coffee shops, yeah. bike lanes, yeah. like, all of this, right? Mm. And then, um, in about 2013, Gen X started having kids. Yeah, and their priorities changed, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and then that's also about and that's where the that's, that's where the pot came through, right? And then that's also when Portlandia came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Portlandia, was it? The TV show Portlandia came uh, out Port about Port that. <laughs> Yeah, right, right, right. And right, so right. you know that you know they 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 uh, kind of made fun of or put a focus on sort of those peculiarities mm -hmm. of Portland, mm -hmm. and it 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 I I think that represents a definite phase in Portland, like yeah, Portland's yeah. development. Well, that was the young folks, too. That's, that's the young area aspect of it. And they, and they organized, if you will. Right. And then and then Gen to... X had kids yes. and then just went home yeah, and just yeah. started raising kids. Yeah, and right, just like, right, you right. know. Wow. And then, uh, you know, and what really speaks to, you know, what, what it speaks to is that, like, you know, Gen X was a generation that uh, gentrified Piedmont. Yeah, you're right. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. You know, like that, you know, that happened, like, right around in Two uh, two thousand when mm -hmm. Gen X started buying houses, like mm -hmm. late nineties. Yes, it was all the young kids yes. coming in here, yes. rehab yep. the houses. Yes, yep. right, and everything like that. And so, Piedmont, well educated, they were well educated. Yeah, yeah Piedmont changed. Mm -hmm. But the the most peculiar thing I, I I find is like remember it's all Gen X there. They all have kids. Mm -hmm. Why does Jefferson only have five hundred students? Uh, interesting, <laughs> interesting. It was good for the goose. It's not good for the gander. Yes. I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's good to talk about it. Yeah. Trust me, because because the idea we're going to need everybody sitting at that table. Gonna, as one said, it's going to take the whole village. I say, as long as you're not trying to kill me, I'll talk. To that, you. That's right. That's right. That's right. There you go. There you go. But but the idea is that we're all together on this piece. Yeah. Have to even seniors to a certain degree. You know, I'm, you know, here I am sitting there. I'm at 58 years old now. Oh you know, really? So, I thought yeah, you were 57. Yeah. No, no, 58. 58 okay. Yeah. And I'm not giving you enough 58. credit. Someone someone said I was 85, but but you know, but I'm 58. <laughs> <laughs> I turned, 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 was it, part You're of looking it. in the I, mirror. I'm a little Gen X it. kind of. But I got You're with us. I put a little Gen. I put a little Gen X in. See, I'm with. I'm with <laughs> 
<laughs> See, so, 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 so I, I, I really feel that, um, you know, because that's, I'm, 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 I'm very Asian. I'm all the groups. That's what I'm saying. You know, we, we've got to understand it's, it's all of us, mm -hmm. whatever. And uh, we're all taxpayers and all that other good stuff. But if we're going to get back to the city of roses and, uh, you know, raise the kids and education and, and be a little bit more responsible, be a little bit more sensitive to seniors, mm -hmm. be sensitive to our laws, if you will, and, and, and get involved, if you will, with the community, pay your taxes. You got to pay your rent. I call it rent. Yeah. Yeah, you got to pay your rent. We got to have rent. Well, uh, you know, it's like we've got these core livability issues about, uh, you know, with the drug crisis, yeah, the homeless right, right, crisis, right, 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 and right, public right, safety. Right, right. And that affects everybody right, right, right. on the spectrum. In, in fact, I even throw it in, it's a human crisis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, is a human crisis, yeah, and and all of us are impacted. And so, I mean, I mean, the fun thing about being in Portland, at least you know, during my lifetime, is there it was growth mm -hmm. and so much change right, and so right, much, right. and and like we were able to focus on those vanity right. projects, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, like putting in bike lanes mm -hmm. everywhere, yeah, yeah. putting up um, mm -hmm. by uh, the things you can lock up the mm -hmm, bikes mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. um, but like. You can't do that until the you know the fundamentals are taken care yeah, of. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then right. so we're having a, a real lack of leadership when it comes down right, to right, right. Uh, handling the fundamentals right, of a right, city. Right. Right. In fact, you you made a point about the bike for that man. I've tried to get Earl to can talk about that piece and that he said you know you know now you know the bikes are put a well to do so to speak. Oh yeah, well, you know I mean, I mean but I, guess what though? But they, but they they, they 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 are basically saying we want accessibility on the main roads too. So and who's paying the taxes? They're I not live, paying the I taxes. Live, I live uh, on uh, Broadway and Jackson. Right, right. Um, and well, we have a bike lane there, right? We've got about two minutes. Keep and going. it's uh, uphill. Um, and you're right. Like, I rarely see people using it. Yeah. And then when I do see them using it, it's on a, a, a two, three thousand dollar bike. Right, right. And it's, then, it's, it's not about... Um, transit equity right. in the traditional right. sense and i've I, i've been you know i'm gen x i have a fixie yeah, uh yeah, i've yeah. i've ridden yeah. my bike in as my main transportation right. in san francisco mm -hmm. portland yeah. washington yeah. dc yeah. yeah um but when they took out so they took out a second lane for the bike lane mm -hmm. so broadway in the yeah, 80s you know. was four lanes wow Downtown. Remember downtown oh, yeah, Broadway when the movie theaters yeah, yeah, were there and everything like that? Yeah. That was a four-lane street. Wow. You know it's down to two lanes now? Yeah, yeah. The bikes have taken over. There. They've taken over two lanes. <laughs> and, then, and then what drives me nuts, like I live on the street, right? And I see, I hear the activists and everything like that. The bike lane doesn't go any place. Yeah, right. It leads basically like Portland State students don't really ride it's bikes. It's a personal thing. Somebody call downtown and say, "Hey, it leads to the steepest you, hills you, in Portland." You understand what I'm saying? You know, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. See, those are the kinds of issues that we need to discuss. Yeah, and those folks need to be at the table to solve the problem because a lot of times they own the property. Well, maybe we should bring Bike Portland on here. There you go. <laughs> with, with Earl there as the lead. Yeah, you give him something to do. Okay, Earl and Jonathan yeah. Miles out. There here. you go. Yeah, <laughs> good one. That's a good one. I like that. One. I like that. One. Well, hey, buddy. This has been great. Yeah, right, yeah, been great. This. this has been just great. Oh, then we got more. You got to come back. Okay. You got to come back. You, you're the point person. We're on it. And I'm just here. Like I said, I'm 58. We're on it. So I'm a it's Gen X, you know. So get, let's keep that together. Yeah. Okay. Gen X, keep on. Hey, folks, by the way, please, please understand where we're coming from. We're, still, we're not trying to make anything light, if you will. We got a serious problem, but we're going to make sure that uh, you feel good about it and you'll be part of the, part of the solution. Yeah. Because that's where we are. And um, if, if, if anybody, any of the viewers have any kind of questions, please re reach out to Oregon Voters Digest yes. and email that in, and we will ask it on the show and, and recognize you. Sounds great. And that. share the show. Yes, please. Yeah, share the show. Please, yeah. please, steam it out to you. Tell your friends about it. But Tell I would definitely anybody. like to do a Q&A portion of it, you know, like to Let's get do that. the viewer involvement. Yes, definitely do that. Yeah. We'll get that done. Okay, well, thank you very, very much for being with us. Enjoy the holidays, folks. Enjoy yourselves, okay? Love you. Have a good one. See you next Happy week. Happy holidays.